like to welcome everyone as we uh, pray on the Feast of uh, Holy Family, that we are all in our own ways, holy families, even if uh, that means some of our toys make a little noise, it's a beautiful thing, so it's wonderful. So um, I thank all the kids for bringing forth the stuffed animals. For me, it always lightens my heart because as kids, we were always struggling over putting things in the nativity set and dad would always take them out and we'd sneak them back in again. <laughs> So it was always quite a joyous time. Um, today I would like to remember in a special way Alberto Bardini, who uh, is Marie Moran's father who died suddenly. So we keep him in our prayers. And we keep all our families in our prayers as we begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we ask for the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit to be with you all. As we approach the altar of the Lord, we take a moment, a moment to call to mind how much in need we are of the gift of God's mercy in our lives. on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. give us the shining example of the Holy Family. Graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity. And so in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal reward through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. The Lord honors a father above his children, and he confirms a mother's rights over her sons. Whoever honors their father atones for sins and gains preservation from them. When they pray, they will be heard. Whoever respects their mother is like one who lays up treasure. The person who honors their father will have joy in their own children, and when they pray, they will be heard. Whoever respects their father will have a long life, and whoever honors their mother obeys the Lord. My child, help your father in his old age, and do not grieve him as long as he lives. Even if his mind fails, be patient with him, because you have all your faculties. Do not despise him all the days of his life. For kindness to your father will not be forgotten, and will be credited to you against your sins, a house raised in justice for you. The word of the Lord. letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, 
to which indeed you are called in the one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, be subject to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and never treat them harshly. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this is your acceptable duty in the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, or they may lose heart. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought the child, Jesus, up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what was stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms, praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother, Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet Anna, the daughter of Phelan, and the tribe of Asher, and she was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then widowed from the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer day and night. And in the moment she came and began to praise God to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When Mary and Joseph had finished everything required under the law, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. They grew and became strong and filled with wisdom and favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you. 
today we're celebrating the feast of the Holy Family. And uh, sometimes we kind of think that the Holy Family are maybe a little more than we are. And, but I would tell you that our families also carry the same kind of holiness. And there's a cute little story about one day when there was a, uh, a terrible snowstorm. And this businessman who owned a little bakery was going to close early because nobody was going to come out in this stuff. And he hadn't had a customer for a few hours and he thought, ah, shut down early. So he started shutting everything off. And by the time he got close to the front door to lock the door, there was a man there. And he was shivering from the cold and stepped in and said, um, I'd like two sweet rolls. And now the owner was shocked that anyone would brave such weather to come out for two sweet rolls. But friend, he said, I don't recognize your face. Are you new around here? Yes, the man said. I moved into the old Wagner place about two weeks ago. Well, welcome, he said. And the baker handed over the sweet rolls. Then he said, are you married? He says, of course I'm married, said the man. Do you think that my mother would send me out on a night like this to get sweet rolls? <laughs> His wife was probably pregnant. <laughs> Family life is about self-donation, and it's a, it's a great gift, and there's holiness in that. It's kind of like the saying where they say that cleanliness is next to godliness. Well, holiness is next to godliness. More correctly, holiness is godliness. To be holy is to be a great aspiration. But if you voice such an idea today, people will more likely look at you kind of oddly, and proclaim that you're not living in the real world. Such criticism flows from the idea that if you are God-centered, you are not earth-centered. So heavenly-minded as to be no earthly good whatsoever. Well, we don't have to look long to see St. Rita, St. Teresa, St. Ignatius Loyola, Teresa of Calcutta, to name a few who are doing all for the glory of God as Jesus did, which shows how ridiculous that conclusion was. These people changed the world by doing everything for the glory of God. And we celebrate today the holiness of the family, that is Joseph, Mary, and Jesus, that they created. And this sometimes we think is far from our ordinary family, but not as far as you think. You know, if you think about the Holy Family, they had a premature pregnancy resulting from Mary agreeing to cooperate with God in bringing new life to the world. And we see Joseph who's considering abandoning his fiance, but prompted by God, he takes her into his home as his wife. And Joseph's acceptance of Mary and her son Jesus was in complete freedom. He found happiness, not in self-sacrifice, but in self-donation. That's the key, I think, to holiness. With their newborn, they had to flee their homeland and live as refugees in, as a time in Egypt. Consecrating him as an infant in the temple, Joseph and Mary began living their vocation to raise Jesus as a devout Jew with love of the law and the prophets and the great stories of old that spoke about the people of God. They treasured in their hearts and were wondering what will become of him. We have Anna and Simeon. All these events took place and all they could do is treasure them in their hearts. They had no idea what was coming. And most parents, frankly, when they have children, they're not quite sure what's coming, but they treasure the moment in their hearts, don't they? They were so concerned at the direction Jesus took as an adult they were concerned about his overall well-being. And final, almost unthinkable event was when Jesus was tortured and killed. And Jesus' final prayer was, Into your hands, O Lord, I commit my spirit that made this tragedy holy. This holy family opens for us because they were open for God and being God-centered and praying for us. And that's the message of Christ, to find a home within us so that we can be part of the Holy Family. 
I've often heard it said that families that pray together stay together. And there's actually even evidence of that um, in the modern psychology today. We know that Joseph and Mary and Jesus were a praying kind of family. They needed to be. Remember Joseph's dream in the gospel as signs from God that made major demands on his family? Escape into Egypt to escape a tyrant king who wanted to kill Jesus? And then they moved back to Israel to live in a totally new place. All so that their baby, who was God, can save humanity. They'd have to be a praying family to navigate all of that. And even today, families still face tremendous adversity, just like the Holy Family did. One gift of family, however, is that we don't have to suffer alone. Eh? We don't do this alone. We do it together. And not only in our own micro families, but in the family of the church, we do it together. The Holy Family was able to persevere because they prayed and responded to God's call. They persevered because they had each other. May we, as one family in Christ, pray together in the same way and always respond to God with courage and with love. The family is what I call the University of Holiness. And I say it's the University of Holiness because I have four brothers and a sister. Now, my sister was the oldest, so I learned from her, but not quite the same as my four brothers, right? Too younger, too older. But it's a place of higher learning. We learn to love each other, even if we don't like each other. We still learn to love each other, eh? We learn as a praying family to forgive, to be patient, to be kind to one another, even in the midst of all the struggles. You see, the secret of St. Joseph is self-donation to his family, not self-sacrifice. It is an approach that ensures complete embrace of family life with all its complexities. See, the word family comes from the Latin, which means familius, which means servant. The word tells us that successful families, that each member must assume the attitude of service towards the other. Each must be generous enough to move beyond the pain that can and will come on this, the feast day of the Holy Family, the Gospel says that those who live in a family must have a, a realistic generosity, not self-sacrifice, which is considered a burden and is often kind of felt like a, feels like a burden, eh? The word self-sacrifice doesn't even want to go down your throat, you know, it's kind of... Yeah. But the word donation, that we give ourselves to the family, we give ourselves to each other, it's a real gift. It's an active gift. It's a free gift that we give. It's a different kind of love, isn't it? Eh? The Holy Family wants us to wear with, like St. Paul says, the clothes of kindness and humility and gentleness and patience, forgiving others and wrapping everything together and putting it in the great gift of love, of donation of your oneself. Now we're dressed in holiness for all occasions. And the world will change because of that holiness. To live happily, we need to stop thinking of our lives as self-sacrifice, but as a self-donation, a gift of ourselves, lovingly to others. This is the great gift that we give back to the Lord, and we give to one another. If it's recognized as a gift, it is a special relationship, and it's a special family. So thank you for the love you share, for the patience you have with one another, for the gift forgiveness and all the wonderful things you do for one another in a family. It's a great sign of that self-donation, that gift we give to others in love. We now stand and profess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We now bring our petitions before the Lord. God is the father of the human family, so let us pray to him for the well-being of all families. For the human family, that all different races may realize that they form one family under God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our leaders and legislators, that they may do everything possible to protect the family as the most important unit in society, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For broken families and families in hardship, that they may find support, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all parents, that they may love their children warmly, yet not possessively, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For children, that they may play their part in making the home a peaceful and happy place, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this congregation, that the coming of Christ may strengthen our faith in God's love for us and help us to love one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our sick relatives and friends, we pray especially for those names listed in our bulletin sick list. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our loved ones who have died, those who died this past week, Alberto Bendini, those who rest in our cemeteries, and especially those we remember in our garden of poinsettias, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our world and we turn to Our Lady and we ask her to intercede for peace in all the war-torn parts of our human family, especially in the Middle East and in Ukraine, as we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God of power and love, grant us in all our tasks your help, in all our doubts your guidance, in all our weakness your strength, and in all our sorrow your consolation, and in all our dangers your protection. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
my sisters and brothers, that this my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that, through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and St. Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through him, the holy exchange that restores our life has shone forth today in splendor. When our frailty is assumed by your word, not only does human mortality receive unending honor, but by this wondrous union, we too are made eternal. And so with the company of the choirs of angels, we praise you as with joy we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. we offer you Lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ that we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit remember Lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope Francis our Bishop and all the clergy with the entire people your son has gained for his own. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Offer each other some sign of that peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
speaking of incredible gifts, Anthony and Sylvia, thank you so much for the great gift of music that you give to us. Also, just a quick couple of announcements. Uh, EDGE is happening on uh, January 21st at 1 p.m. And uh, confirmation sponsor meeting is coming up on January 10th. And first community parent meeting is January 17th, both Wednesdays, here at St. John's at 7 o'clock. And uh, I always like to tell a joke. I uh, don't know how good this one is, but I never like to joke too strongly against families because uh, families have enough struggle with it. We joke about them, right? But um, this is uh, the joke is about uh, dad's uh, New Year's resolution. Last year, when I called my parents and I wished them a happy New Year's, my dad answered the phone and I said, Well, dad, what's your New Year's resolution? And uh, he said, to make your mother as happy as I can all year. And uh, of course, then mom came on the phone and he said, mom, what's your New Year's resolution? And she said, to see that your father keeps his resolution all year. <laughs> I don't know, it's just a joke. But um, I wanna wish you all a beautiful, wonderful uh, New Year's. I wanna wish you the beautiful gift of Christmas. We continue to keep celebrating and joyfully. So thank you for that. Uh, it's amazing the difference a week makes for seating arrangements. <laughs> but um, just a reminder that tomorrow night, there's a five o'clock mass. It's the New Year's Eve mass. So it's the celebration of Mary, Mother of God. So after the three masses in the morning, there'll be a five o'clock and then three masses also Monday morning for New Year's. So keep that in mind just so you know. And um, have a blessed, glorious and wonderful new year. And thank you for everybody who's done so much around here over Christmas, the decorators, the altar servers, the musicians, my God, you know, they've done such a wonderful job and thank you all for being part of the family. It's a wonderful holy family we're in and I'm grateful for all of you. Have a blessed and a wonderful week. Pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth in the peace and love of Jesus Christ and have a blessed week.